Welcome everybody. We are here for the first uh, interview of the Ilias uh, Espresso series. What's the goal of uh, this series of interview? Uh, first of all, we uh, have as a first guest, uh, Matthias Kunk, that is the general manager of uh, the Ilia Society. Hello, Matthias. Uh, I think you activate your yeah. microphone. Hello, Roberto. Okay, thank Hi. you. <laughs> and uh, we will talk about uh, open source uh, and especially Ilias, uh, that is one of the, uh, let's say, most uh, well known. Uh, open source LMS of European origin. And what is surprising is really the success that uh, Elias had in the defense sector, in the high-tech industry, and in many, many universities. So we will have uh, a really lot of things uh, to talk with, uh, with Matthias and also with the other members of the Elias community in the following weeks. The Elias uh, LMS open source is, uh, let's say, managed uh, from the Elias Society that was uh, founded in 2009, I think, and it's a non-profit uh, organization. A first question for you, Matthias. What was the decision to make the Elias Society active to manage the Elias LMS? Well, in the, in the very beginning of the Elias development, um, the, the entire coordination of the software development uh, took place at the University of Cologne. So also from the very beginning, it was not a commercial activity. Uh, and we, we've done that for about 10 years. Um, until 2009, exactly. Uh, but then we met, we noticed that it's too difficult to do that from a, from a university because you know all the structures and and, and and regulations and so on it was a bit difficult. So we decided we need another another form to realize that. And we didn't want to to create a company because there were already companies around Elias who had the, the so-called service providers like uh, OC Lab, for example. Um, so these companies that are offering services for it. So we needed something which was a bit more independent, non-commercial. And then in Germany, we have this, what we call Verein, which is society, which is a very typical uh, uh, um, form to realize such an activity, um, a legal form for that. And so we decided to do that. And because it, again, is something that is, it's open to everyone. Everyone can join it as a member. So it fit quite well to our general approach of our software development. Yeah, yeah. I, and I have to agree because uh, the coordination is very smooth and uh, also the work with the Elias Society and the other service uh, providers that we know uh, is really a good cooperation and so on. Uh, a question about you, Matthias. I remember when we met the first time, actually first time it was 2003, <laughs> so it's a long time ago. I was surprised because you, uh, in my opinion, you are a little bit French. Let me play with my hands, you know, as an Italian. <laughs> you are a little bit French, you are a little bit Italian. <laughs> so how, how it comes? Yeah, I, I always love to travel around. I was always interested in, 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 in other countries, uh, speak a bit of Italian. I worked for a while in France uh, in, my, in my first career uh, uh, as journalist. Uh, so this is why I had some this relation. Yeah. I still have family, also have a bit family in France and, and, and Portugal. So maybe this gave me that uh, impression of being... Uh, uh, a bit, bit international, but I, I'm not that. It's, it's. Uh, I'm very German, I think. <laughs> but, but maybe I'm. Sometimes I talk with my hands. That's right. <laughs> okay, let's go on. We we will talk a little bit about the past in this yeah. first interview, not only uh, about the future. So, how came the decision to develop uh, uh, Elias? I mean, an LMS in 1988 that is really at the very beginning. <laughs> That's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we started that project in, it, 
in 97 almost. Or almost. It's a long um, time ago. Yeah, uh, at, at, at University of Cologne, it's now 25 years uh, uh, almost. Mm, and um, at that time, we, we didn't thought about creating or developing software. We thought that these, the software is already available that we need for our project we had at that time to improve teaching and learning at a huge university like University of Cologne. And we had this so-called mass university. You know that you have a lot of students. The, the lecture hall is not big enough and so on. We thought, what could be alternative uh, uh, um, options uh, to improve this situation? And we thought in the very beginning that all this software is already available. We only need to reuse it and combine it at, at our university, and that's it. Um, and then, uh, in, let's say, in the first half, of the year of the, of the project first six months we we looked around and was okay there was already some software in the us and of course there were already forums and so tiny pieces are, were already available but we missed something that brings it all together and we thought that it's necessary to have something all together and then in the end we noticed that we have to do that by our own we we tried to 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 collaborate with other companies they didn't they weren't that interested. So in the end, time was running. Uh, we got the money for that. We had a goal to, to reach. So we decided to make it ourselves. And then we, we created something, what we at that time called a learning platform. We didn't, we didn't use the name learning management system at that time. I think it came up in 1998, 99, around that. But in the beginning, it was more like a platform where you have all these tools that you can use. And this is still the, the approach of Elias today, that you have this integration of tools in one environment, which makes yeah. it easier yeah. to use, same usability and all that. That's, and so, so we started, uh, so we became um, a software developers, let's say, by chance a bit. Yeah, we, we did more <laughs> than that. Yeah, and, and that's also the, then it goes, get on what happened now after we had developed it, I think. That's that's probably uh, uh, interesting as well. When we decided to to say what uh, shall shall we make a spin off of the university and try to earn money, uh, which was possible at that time because if you started something with internet at, in ninety nine, you got money from everywhere. Or uh, shall we try to use another kind of business model, uh, which was open source? And yeah. at, at that time, Linux uh, came up, and 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 I was quite fascinating of this approach because it remembered me um, that it is a bit similar to what is uh, what is uh, uh, happens in science, what happened, what happens at university. Yeah? You have people are collaborating; they have to 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 declare what they are doing. It has to be proven to so be open. It has to, it's necessary to reproduce it and all that. And the idea of open source that you can look in the source code, what happens inside and to improve it and to, to uh, do it. That was quite fascinating. And I like that. Yeah. 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 I agree. And also if I can add the something, for example, sometimes uh, here in Italy, when you have a software development inside the university, the result are taken outside and uh, there are spin-offs but these spin-offs are profit company so in my opinion this is a little bit borderline because you use public money to generate something that it doesn't belong anymore to the public so the fact that you did uh, open source is absolutely to respect in my opinion and then i remember we were involved at the beginning with uh, the co-founder of OC with Mauro in an European project, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, then it, it, then it, uh, when, uh, things uh, happened quite quickly. And we, we decided to make an open source project in 2000. Um, and then, it, and this was an invitation to others to, to collaborate with us because that was the main idea behind that. We say, we don't want to do this by our own. Um, but we want to invite others and, and um, let's say, put it on several shoulders uh, to, to bring it forward. And then, of course, projects arise about e-learning. And then we had this, this first uh, international uh, activities as well. Yeah. yeah. And it's, this was quite easy for us because, you know, IT and all this stuff, it's, it's much easier to, to have an international project. And then if you think about, let's say, literature or something, yeah. because we don't have this language border. It was quite easier to make that. 
And um, what was, in your opinion, the biggest difficulty uh, to start talking about e-learning in a time where e-learning was not very, uh, I wouldn't say popular, what was not really in the mind of the people at that time? I think it was what was difficult uh, was to convince people that we don't want to get rid of, of classroom teaching and learning and training at totally, but that we want to combine it, what was later called blended learning. In the very beginning at the University of Cologne, we, we um, already invented something that, that, that you could not today call a blended learning approach because we said we have these lectures and we, 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 we put e-learning at the side and, and put it in between the lectures. So it was always a combination because on the other hand, we had already at that time in Germany, um, something like the Open University in the UK, or the Fan University, which is pure online or at that time, let's say envelopes because they, they, they didn't use the internet yet. Or they started with it, let's say, to be honest. But it, uh, the, the majority they learned by you, you got your, your envelopes with your with your uh, learning with the lessons and, through, and then uh, let's say every half a year you went somewhere and wrote a test. So a lot of people were afraid in the very beginning that that we want to substitute classroom by computer, and that that was we contrived. We had to convince them that that's not, that's not true. We we wanted to take the best from both worlds. To say to what is what is good in classroom and lecture and face to face and in, in, in talking with with together in a room, and what could be a, an advantage if you use a computer, if you use IT based uh, systems uh, in your own time and at the, at the moment when you want it. So this was a, in, in the beginning it was a problem. Funny thing is that technology was never that huge problem. Okay, of course. Uh, computers were slower at that time, but on the other on the other hand, they didn't need that much resources. I can remember that I, we had a server at University of Cologne for the entire university with at that time already let's say twenty thousand users or even more. It was you know this this one uh, 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 one unit unit high uh, 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 server. Um, today we, we you need let's say eight times this, this power uh, to run Elias smoothly. But at that time it was much easier, it was, sm it was smaller. So techno the technology always adapts to, to your needs. That's yeah, the, you're right. The, the great problem is people, to convince people to do that and to, in, to, to invest time because everyone knows that if you start with e-learning, it's not, it's always an, an effort to do that, to, you have to invest money, you have to invest time. Um, you have to to uh, also be open to do uh, mistakes and to go back again, stand up and and try it again. So th that was more the problem. And You're right. <laughs> to be honest, until COVID, uh, yeah. so <laughs> You're COVID right. changed You're right. a lot in that. Uh, uh, but actually, for example, Italy was for sure behind just the companies that really. Uh, sell everywhere worldwide or in the international market who are ready for having uh, any learning platform. And in my opinion, nowadays, now, uh, it's even uh, uh, more that the LMS is not the key of the game. I mean, you can have the LMS, but you need also other items, maybe some virtual reality, maybe you need your uh, uh, learning locker stuff, you know, the learning record store. I mean, today, the architecture of a standard learning uh, platform, or let's say a total learning architecture is a bit more complex. So what would be the, the suggestion that uh, uh, you may have in mind for someone who is fallen a little bit behind and needs to start today with a with a learning, let's say. Yeah, I would say think big but start small. Yeah, because that I think that's very important. Um, it it doesn't make sense to try to do too much things in one step at the beginning in the mm. very beginning that doesn't work it's, but on the other hand it 
it's it's good to have a certain vision to think okay we, in the next years we want to realize that but now we start with a small project absolutely we're in in a in maybe also in an environment or in a place if you, if you talk about a company maybe not in that uh, uh, department where uh, a lot of people are quite re uh, 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 resistant, resistant. But yeah. more open maybe and then start and 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 and, and um, get some experiences and also yeah try to uh, to have a long long breath for to realize it because it, it, there will always be difficulties and always people yeah. who try yeah. to to block it or whatever so but but if it's if it's not if it's not too big then you have the chance to realize it and then if it has success then it could you could could be extended yeah, yeah. but let me take something again back what you, you mentioned before with with the lms and the complex structure i think um still today the learning management system is something like the backbone of such e-learning activities so of course i, I remember uh, some years ago when people uh, on, on a conference e-learning conference they said well learning management is dead we don't need them anymore personal learning environment that's it and then i said yeah okay yeah then let's try to realize our scenarios with with, with that approach well, it's not that easy so it's of course it, it, it the use of a learning of learning management systems always changing and then extending and then something else. but nevertheless i think it's a, it's an important backbone you need and if you tell for example virtual reality that's that's a kind of add-on that you can use um and uh, that you can where you can uh, improve um the the attractiveness of 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 of, of the stuff or make things easier to understand um, I remember also quite interesting examples from your side uh, uh, in this, in a, with the with the use of the VR uh, 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 um, glasses and so on. Yeah, it was m way too early. <laughs> yeah, 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 but you had a good idea. It was great. Yeah, and, and I, it, I was quickly convinced that it's a good approach. But in the end, you still need this 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 backbone um, to to realize this the, your e-learning activities and. I think that won't change that quickly. No, no, no. Um, I agree that you have to paint uh, the whole picture that you have in mind. So let's say not starting like, uh, okay, I have to do this and you don't think about the rest. Uh, I think the best approach is to create a, your picture because every company has different needs, every school has different needs, and then you start building up. Because if you want to make top bottom, it's it's too expensive. I mean, it's too expensive, and you are not sure of the results, so you have to go back and then. So I think uh, uh, having a strategy and then starting bottom up is the best in my yeah, opinion and looking where 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 you can get quickly quick you quickly get benefits of it exactly that, that you get that uh, um there's a return on investment on investment, in certain way yeah, yeah? and uh, for let's say making for example that you get into contact with your with your uh, employees to improve that or or um those people who work in uh, in other departments uh bringing things together trying to 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 push a certain uh, culture of 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 communication that has changed to to all these places so not everything is suitable or great to to be realized in e-learning but some some activities more than others and you have to find which is the one for from your company yeah okay let's change uh, the subject uh, shortly uh, that it's a subject I was really impressed from the last conference, even if it was still online due to the COVID uh, pandemic. And it was digital sovereignty. Because I really do agree that the more we go on with uh, learning management and use of personal data, we have to be careful because at the end, inside the LMS, you have opinions of people, you have what they did, what they studied, where they are competent or not. So uh, I agree that one of the focus of the last conference was digital sovereignty. So what do you think personally about having uh, um, 
a more independent role in Europe about that? And what's the role of open source in, in that scenario? I think the role of open source is that it's a it's it's a, a an important brick in this wall uh, called called digital serenity. It's not the only it's not the only thing that is needed, or it's not the the, the 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 only solution. But open source software helps to realize that what what is called the uh, digital serenity. And um, because you have access, you have full access to your software. You can can what I told before. You can look inside. You have. It has its transparency if you if you need it, and this makes gives you a certain in, in, in the independence from from the uh, 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 service suppliers. That's it. So to be honest, to, for example, today we use a, a commercial um, video conference system with Zoom. So I don't know if you I think you're running that uh, this 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 conference is running on a server somewhere in the US or whatever. So we don't really know what happens in the background. Of course, uh, some some uh, they they already start to to build up uh, um, um, or offer servers already in the European Union. Okay, they are clever enough to know that they have to 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 adapt the changes. But you never have the full control compared to if if you would have run your own uh, video conferencing system on your server, and um, this is. Often easier was easy, or let's say open source software could be a way to realize that. Yeah, yeah. it's not it's not the it's not the only solution. That's important. Yeah? But this, it's con for example, if you use Elias as an open source software and then you put on content, uh, uh, and the content connects you with some server somewhere between China or US, uh, then you also there is you don't have no control of your data anymore. So you have to really to take care of uh, uh, um, what happens on your server, but Open source software is one part of that, not the only yeah. one, but uh, but uh, one part of it. I have to say there are some public organizations, even in Italy, that are more sensitive about that. For example, we have the local government of uh, South Tyrol that already decided not to use Teams, not to use Zoom, but to use Big Blue Button that is an open source teleconferencing system installed in an Italian server that uh, we are controlling. Okay, but that's why we know. And uh, I think this is uh, a good approach because then you are more safe, more sure that speech between uh, public employees or even exams are th the data stay in Europe, let's say. Yeah, but the thing is that that, that digital sovereignty is, has also a very strong political impact, and it's something yeah. that that cannot be uh, solved by us alone. So it's necessary that you have this governmental uh, uh, support. It's um, if you, for example, if you imagine um, all these universities, companies are that that needed a software solution in in the beginning of the COVID uh, uh, pandemic to realize online. Uh, 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 teaching and learning, what we are doing today. Yeah. So of course it was quite easy to say, well, I have some, I take some money and I buy this service and I, I take the service from a service provider somewhere, no matter where, inside Europe or US or China, whatever, and to pay for this service and that's okay. And I get something and uh, uh, maybe the prices go up, but I pay for it and it's, 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 it's just done. software as a service. And if you want to change that, and then you say, well, I would maybe prefer to do this by our own, but that requires, I need server, I need people who do it. Where do I get the money for that? And then, then for example, the government that pays, gives money for the universities or for schools to, to buy licensed software, but they don't give the money to uh, for an employee that, that, that runs right. the server, that takes care, because they are now employees, we don't want it. We, we prefer to buy, give money for licenses. Then you are you really have a big problem you can't realize what you want to do so that's it's in, in, in focusing on digital sovereignty it's important that that um, um the, the the decision makers and politics accept that they don't pay license software but they have to pay for People. infrastructure it's it's an infrastructure thing what we have for focus and it's, and, and and to be honest it's a bit a bit like uh, sorry to say that for to Italians, a bit like the bridges. If you don't take care of them, one day 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. And so we also, it's also important that 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 the government is paying for those activities that offer these infrastructures. Like, it's not only about for Elias. It's a lot of there are a lot of other projects which do great work, but always fighting for money to 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 finance their activities, and. And this is, I think, a very important thing that things changing in that way. And I'm very happy that the EU Commission, for example, they started now or really make pushing open source uh, uh, software and see that see open source software as an important part of their uh, strategy for independence and for competitiveness uh, 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 of Europe compared to other countries. Yeah, absolutely right. And, and also, it's a very interesting business uh, uh, also business business aspect because a, a lot of small medium enterprises in the in Europe working in this in this uh, uh, in this business, offering these services, developing software, uh, and it's I think it's much better to give them the money and let, let them earn the money than shipping the money to. Uh, to, to the, the West US. Coast, uh, 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 and for for those who already have enough of it. Yeah, but also I would like to underline that these pushes in a, in a direction that you mentioned, that you use money for people, for creating jobs, yeah. and not for paying financial services or increase the financial result of an already existing company. Exactly. So we hope that this trend goes on and uh, in general, what do you, how do you see uh, e-learning in, let's say, in five years? Personally, I think that we would be like an ecosystem that is more accepted, that you have digital education together with a traditional one, you have different things. So what, what do you think? In, what do you see in five years? I'm always very careful with those predictions because five years or 10 years could be a very short time for things changing. On the other hand, it could, uh, uh, could change. Uh, <laughs> things could change so quickly. I remember, I remember the very beginning when we started, uh, uh, the, 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 the technological innovation was very quickly. So you thought, well, in five years, it's, boom. Uh, <laughs> totally new everything then I know then we had there was uh, I watched what happens between 2000 and 2005 and the speed was less than the years before and also today it's a, it's a, it's a, if I look back what happened five years ago and with Elias and what some things you, you have to mention what is already five years it feels like one year uh, nothing changed and um, so I'm careful with it but I think that um, one effect of the COVID pandemic was that uh, that the acceptance of e-learning has changed, and the, the, that that the, re the resistance of some institutions and, and persons against e-learning this activity. This this has uh, gone down, and um, it's more getting normal than it maybe was before. Even if we go back, hopefully to the classroom, because I don't want to 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 continue this pure online activities uh, uh, any longer. I'm very happy that we hopefully meet us in September for an Elias conference in Bologna, and not again uh, in front of a screen. Online. <laughs> um, so, but I, I think, for example, I'm, I'm sure that we, that things will change a bit, that we will have more use of like something like that, video conferencing and, 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 and online activities than before. But I think in these five years, we don't won't have a total change. And even if we talk about, let's say, virtual reality, augmented reality, I don't think that that this is this is uh, um, uh, fully realized everywhere because things need their time to 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 be realized. But sometimes you have you know have this this breaking moments and uh, imagine two thousand nine the, the iPhone uh, uh, and then then some sometimes an, a certain technology can change things very quickly. Maybe in five years we don't use the keyboard anymore, but we, we make things like we 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 talk with, with our gestures. Teams. Yeah, create a test, please. <laughs> Not without please works also without please. Create a test, and then it's not. Um, but but it could happen. It could. I I don't want to 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 
to know to say when this will happen could ha also take another 20 years till this is possible so i'm i'm careful okay uh, I don't, then I don't let's want... go back to reality let's <laughs> let's talk about the elias community you mentioned uh, the elias conference in bologna and of course we are very happy to be the host and to uh, help the elias community to organize that and we look forward to merge uh, as we Italians always do, to merge a great conference and some fun moments. But uh, what do you think? Why it's important to be nearer to the Elias community? If you have suggestion to join the Elias Society, uh, I think, for example, that it was really, of course, good for us because we were able to be in a community where we could also adapt the ELIA software to the needs of uh, our larger customers. So why do you think there is uh, an advantage in, uh, in this uh, European ELIAS community? Well, from, from the very beginning, Ilias was, was community driven. That was something, or let's say after we made it an open source project after the first years. And this community of, of users that, that, that use Ilias for their e-learning purposes was something for, for, me, for me, it was a very, very important uh, aspect of, of, of this, the work I'm, 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 I'm doing. Um, because I want to bring together, um, I think it's very important to bring together all these people and try to push this in a certain direction. So Elias is also an, in, in, an invitation to this community. People are invited to join us, to contribute to Elias, to support us. Sometimes it's, it's, it's enough to say, well, I like it, uh, or uh, I pay my membership fee for the Elias conference. Uh, for the Elias uh, Society, but but others are contributing by providing software or uh, uh, analyzing stuff, finding bugs, paying money for software development, and so on. So there are different ways of contributing to Elias and bring it forward. And this all is done in in this community, which has, let's be honest, of course, different circles. There's this inner circle of those who are dealing with Elias every day, and then it's wider where they they involved from time to time. But the Ilias conference, for example, this is the ninth uh, thing of the Ilias conference. This is the, the event every year where these people come together. Some, some say it's like a huge family. Um, uh, and um, this, this community that comes together to exchange experience, to make new friends, to plan new programs, to, to integrate new members, of course, because we always get new members. They have they, they, they get their chance. They find people with whom they can exchange experiences, ask them questions. So this is the this idea of this community. And the Ilias Conference itself is this, uh, this uh, place where you see what, what happened, what was done with Ilias very good. And the Ilias Society is the, the, the form, is the, the place where all these people can 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 come together and organize uh, uh, themselves and um, to 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 push Elias forward and to give it the sustainability it needs uh, for the next yeah. years. So this is very much community driven and uh, um, and so I'm always very happy to come to these events every year and and see this community or see this family if you if you want to say so yeah and also do you want to mention something about there is always a need from the service provider to have new programmers because there's yeah, always yeah, a, a lot of work to be done yeah. right so yeah, if there is some italian who want to work in <laughs> Germany for some time. Yeah. Please, <laughs> please, please contact Roberto immediately. Yeah, <laughs> funny thing is that, um, let's say 10 years ago, I, I walked around and tried to get money for, for, for Elias development. And I said, well, oh, don't we need some money here? Can we give some, take some from this project and so on? And always trying, and always, it was a lack of money to, to do programming. Uh, nowadays, and that's not only because of COVID, but it made it even worse. There's a lot of money, and we uh, have a lack of, of human resources okay. to realize that. Um, of course, it's 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 something that you you can you see in all different domains. It's not something that is typical for Elias or software development area. It's also uh, 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 
quite difficult, at least in Germany, to get a plumber or uh, 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 another uh, craftsman uh, if you need it. But um, this is this is something really. If if people are interested in in software development, hey, come to us. Uh, we 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 we, we, uh, we would be happy. No. Of course, the requirements are not that it's not not, not low. So you, the people need to have a certain uh, skills. Uh, skills, of course. But we would be so happy to have if we have more young people who are interested in in developing software within a really nice community. Um, and it would be great to to yeah to give them a chance. We also think in 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 the fine with together with the technical board and the uh, and and other. Uh, um, persons in the community, how we could make it easier for new people, for new developers to get into the development of Edith. Because of course, it's it's a huge system, it's complex, it just has grown 20 years. You need to know a lot before you can write your first line of code, but uh, we try to make things a bit easier. Uh, not that easy to do that, but we are, we are working on that. Working on that. Okay. Matthias, if you agree, first of all, thank you. I know you could talk uh, for hours, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I would give some space to questions. I think uh, I can wake up Ilario that is uh, behind the scenes. And if Ilario, there are some questions from the public, uh, you are very welcome to, yeah. to intervene. Uh, first, thank you, Matthias. Um, for coming here and having this uh, wonderful interview. Uh, we have already a couple of questions. Um, the first is uh, that uh, in Italy, after you know the, the pandemic, we have uh, a fast growth uh, for e-learning topics. You know, uh, many many companies, uh, many organizations are uh, asking uh, about e-learning and also Elias. Um, from your side, what happened in Germany and uh, as far as you know in the other middle European countries? Concerning what? What happens concerning what? The fast growth of uh, um, requests about e-learning topics. Uh, yeah, I, th I think that's that's something you can you can. I, I don't know what happens in all European countries, but as far as the countries I know, of course, there's a growth growth of, of, of e-learning activities everywhere because uh, not only because of COVID but but this forced it a lot and I think that made it necessary for a lot of uh, um, companies also to get open to it uh, and and to accept it and to try to to start projects with it. I'm, I'm, um, we have an e-learning fair in Germany which is also international called LearnTech it didn't took place last year, but in 2020, the last time when I was there, um, and uh, it exists for 25 years or longer. And e-learning is nothing new on that conference, but there are still companies come into that place to say, well, we have never have, haven't started yet. We now want to 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 introduce e-learning in our company. Can you help us, or what what are you offering? So, um, uh, and that was two months before uh, before the lockdown. Um, so you can imagine if the next time, the, uh, the next LearnTech will be in May uh, this year, hopefully hopefully it will be then take face to face. And I think there will be a lot of companies again who come to say, now we, we, we notice that we need something to do here. Uh, what what can you can, what can you offer? What is Elias, could Elias help us? So I think that there, there is a, a, a high demand on, on, on these activities. I think some countries are more forward, and, and I don't want to say that German is really a, a, a very forward. Roberto mentioned before that uh, Italy is behind and German is in, uh, in front. That's I'm not sure, and I'm not uh, that's not true. But uh, maybe it's still we do some. Uh, we are a bit more active, or a bit, 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 a bit advanced to Italy. But I'm sure that other countries, uh, uh, and it's not the not Estonia only. Um, uh, um, have at least the same or even more uh, um, uh, 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 more close to or, or, or to e-learning than we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, we uh, have another question from uh, Nicola Mastrilli yeah. uh, asking um, if uh, you could tell something about uh, future development connected to Experience API CMI5. Um, if uh, there is a, a new standard frontier and if uh, some case studies will be shown on the next Ilias conference. 
Okay, the last question I can't tell you yet because the program committee which decides about the program is uh, still on uh, preparing the, the program. So uh, I, I, I don't know exactly what will be there, but it's uh, it will be published, the program will be published uh, um, probably April or May uh, on the website. But uh, XAPI and, and CMI5, this is this uh, uh, we have we have introduced to Elias in the last two, uh, or it was Elias six. So it, we now we have Elias seven. We prepare Elias eight. But since Elias six, we have this support of XAPI and CMI5. So this is something we we um, try to to make more popular in in Elias. For for a long time, SCORM was very important, but now. Uh, there are these new standards like like CMI5 that that substitutes a bit SCORM, um, and also we uh, I'm happy to announce that we have decided uh, in the beginning of this year to become member of IMS Global, which is the institution that uh, watches uh, and decides about a lot of e-learning standards, and so uh, we are proud to um, to become member of the um, of the. Uh, let's say the inner circle of, 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 of IMS. Uh, and next week, on, on, on uh, uh, next, next Wednesday, I will have my first uh, workshop with them about LTI. And we are trying to push forward that there will be a kind of European development uh, team for LTI um, um, that they will build up because IMS still is very much dominated by the US. But they try to to, to extend to to Europe. So um, I think in this in this different dif this, this different standards, we will try to introduce more and more and try to to make Elias more standard compliant as it is already. We we always looked on standards, but uh, of course it's, there are still things to be improved. Yeah, and I hope we will have some interesting uh, 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 case studies uh, on the conference. But that, um, um, unfortunately, I cannot tell you exactly what it, it will be. Yeah, furthermore, I'll say that uh, uh, in the next uh, um, Ilias Espresso interviews, we'll have uh, um, other experts about these new standards. So yeah. for sure, we'll uh, cover pretty much that topic too. Yeah, I saw One that Joran other... Kattenberg will be yeah. joining yeah. you. So he, he will, I think he has he can tell much more about it than I can do. Yeah, um, another question. Oh, another Yuran. question. Another question. Yuran is in this chat. I saw him. Yeah. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Another question is uh, working in uh, the open source world uh, may be uh, sometimes challenging to balance work and private life. Uh, and let's say that it's not properly a nine to five job. Uh, how do you manage it? Me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I try. Sometimes I try to make it a job nine to five. Sometimes I'm sitting in, the, in front of the computer in the evening or on the weekend. No, it's uh, yeah, but that's that. Isn't that something? If you if you burn for your work, then it's. I'm I'm not counting the hours. No, no, you're right. <laughs> but it's not the thing. Is it's not necessary. You don't have to do that to to be to 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 if you want to contribute to. You can also you can say, well, just do a little, only a little bit for Elias. It's not necessary that if you if you contribute to the community, then you are then we take you and then you have to work <laughs> uh, like like uh, uh, um, in a coal mine. No. Um, it depends on. I think this also ch is changing now. When I when we talk, we are we are thinking about uh, 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 looking for new employees, trying to extend the, the uh, um, uh, um, some jobs at Un Ilias Universe at, 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 at the Ilias uh, Society. And the thing is that we we think what ch do they re still want to to work five days a week? Or shouldn't we offer a job that only far four days so that they still have enough time for doing other things? You know this what life work balance. This is something which is exists in, in 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 our community as well. And the big advantage is that, for example, all this the, the way how we work in this community in this I would always call it a virtual universe, a virtual uh, company. Um, even before COVID, we had I had employees which work didn't work in my office. They worked somewhere else in Germany. And thanks to the internet and thanks to the such tools, it's it's possible. And if if they 
if they tell me, well, this afternoon I have no time because I have to go with the kids to the, to the doctor, can we have the, can we have the uh, uh, conference or the meeting uh, late in the later afternoon or beginning of the evening? No problem because the, it's not necessary to be in the office. You go just use your computer. Yeah. And that's it. So that yeah. makes e life quite quite easier. In the end, you have to take attention that you don't work more than uh, uh, before. But. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, point, Ilan, uh, if you have anyone, more questions? I mean, yeah, um, probably one other question will come uh, soon. Uh, in the meanwhile, um, I want to read a message from Alberto Bianchi from SACMI uh, to Matthias. That, that says, is an Italian company. We remember it was the first large <laughs> Italian uh, user of um, Elias. And they contributed uh, a lot from 2004 when they started onwards to implement Elias and to make it really fit for technical trainings. Yes. So I had to say that because I followed all the story. Yeah, Alberto says, uh, I wish Matthias uh, a lot of help and I'm deeply grateful to him for how wisely and skillfully he has carried on an impressive project mm -hmm. like Elias. Thank you, Alberto. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but Great. I'm, 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 hopefully we will, we will win him uh, pretty soon again as presenter because I, there are only very few persons I know that have, can can do this great presentations like Alberto, and not only with the hands but also with the hands. yeah, with content. <laughs> You're right. So hopefully to see you soon again. Okay. No more questions. So. Fine. So I take the final word, Matthias. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think it was uh, yeah, an interesting interview. And uh, I just final note about the next interview of Ilias Presso. It will be on Thursday, not on Friday. This will be an exception to the rule. But next Thursday, February the 10th, we will have Andre and Hannah from uh, Minervis, that is a German service provider that was a spin-off uh, of a German organization about uh, artificial intelligence. And they do have a very interesting project about uh, coaching. So I think it will be a continuous, great series of interview with Elias Espresso and I just to underline for the Italian user, of course, next week, uh, you will find uh, the video with Italian subtitles if you want to catch up uh, some, content, some, some contents about the Matthias interview. Okay. Thank you, Matthias. was very nice. Daumen hoch. <laughs> ciao, ciao.